I'm a single mom of two boys, tweens. Their father and I divorced five years ago after I learned he was cheating on me. He got her pregnant right before he told me, and that was why he confessed, or right after. But our divorce was not an easy one. He wanted to stay friends, and I could not look at him after what he did. He and I were together for over 13 years. He was also a friend before he was my boyfriend and husband, and to have him betray me and treat me that way was awful. He married his affair partner. They had a daughter within months of our separation, followed by a son after our divorce and their marriage. Last year, they lost a baby, which led to the discovery that his wife had cancer. What followed was a lot of fighting between the two of us again. He wanted me to help him and his wife out. He said their children, currently very young, needed family beyond just him and his wife. His own family disowned him for our divorce. They were highly religious, and she has no family. I told him it would be over my dead body, I would help him. He argued that it was for the children, and if not for his kids with her, then for our boys, who could see their family heal and be one. I told him he stopped any chance of that happening when he cheated on me. I didn't expect him to tell his daughter's school to call me when she got sick. He was at work at the time and couldn't leave apparently because he'd already missed a lot of work due to his wife, who was home recovering from chemo. I got the call and was asked if I would pick her up, and I said no. Several hours later, I got reamed on the phone by him for leaving his sick child at school when I knew they had nobody. This was when he told me he couldn't leave and that his wife was resting. I told him the babysitter for his son should have been called over me. He told me he was in daycare and I should be ashamed because she was a sick child who was going through a lot and I could have helped. He told me he hoped our sons would be ashamed of me. They aren't. And I argued back with him over the phone at the time. But I guess part of me does feel bad for the child. My sons also sent an atmosphere while they were with their dad after the incident when they talked about me, and I hate that for them. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. What kind of fool lists his ex-wife as the emergency contact for his affair child? The audacity of him to get mad at you. The only children of his you need to care for are the ones you share with him. Do not let him tell you otherwise. Too bad he tanked his own life, but that's not your problem. If he can't handle the situation he got himself into, he needs to figure out how to get through it. You're not responsible for his mistakes. While it's unfortunate his wife has cancer, you're still not obligated to help him at all with anything except related to your children. He can apologize and make amends with family or go out and make friends and get the support that way. It's not your job. This makes me think you're his backup, too. He needs a woman who will put up with his BS, which smells like he's preparing for either outcome with his affair wife. If he ropes you in now and then she passes, he'll have a backup wife who will take responsibility for his affair children. I wouldn't be surprised if, should the new wife lose to cancer, the ex was trying to get back together with OP to try to win her over and get her to marry him again. Not just taking on mothering roles for him, but full-on becoming his wife again. Honestly, I was wondering if this is something that can be solved by going back to court as well. There has got to be a way to force this man to back off from trying to force his affair child on his ex-wife. OP, please sign your kids up for some counselling because this guy is a jerk when he doesn't get what he wants and they should have the tools to deal with their father's BS behaviour. Make sure you contact the school and tell them to remove your contact details from the records of any child that isn't yours and that unless they are told directly from you, they are not to contact you regarding these children. My sister-in-law, husband's older sister and I, gave birth to daughters around the same time. My daughter was born in early June, hers was born in mid-June. Her daughter marks five kids for sister-in-law and her husband. Our daughter is mine and my husband's first child. A day after my daughter was born, my husband posted the announcement on his social media, and then sister-in-law commented asking what her actual name was though the name was mentioned in the post. He replied for her to reread it and she would see the name. She didn't reply after that. When she gave birth to her daughter, she made her announcement and went on a slight tangent about naming children and how much pride she and her husband took in giving their children real people names. The other day, we were at my husband's parents' house for a barbecue and she went all in on saying how our daughter's name is a hippie freak name and how we passed up the chance to give her a legitimate actual name. She said we could have clearly used one of her kids' names since we were struggling so badly. For context, our daughter is Aura. Her kids are Edward, Martha, Dorothy, Lawrence and Susan, her youngest. My husband told her we were pleased with our daughter's name and we were happy she was happy with the names of her children and we should all just be happy and move on. 
She told me that I was setting my daughter up for a hard life and that her name would label her forever. All kinds of stuff. Also went on about how grandma and grandpa's names were so handsome and beautiful and could carry a child throughout their lives. She followed up by accusing me of not caring about my daughter. I told her she could keep her grandma names and I would keep my hippie freak names and the conversation was over because I did not care to hear about it anymore. My husband and I left. She followed up with how dare I say grandma names like something was wrong with them. I texted her that hippie freak was too busy to engage further. I was mad at first and now I'm questioning my actions. I don't like the names she chose for her kids. They're not to my taste and maybe my tone did relay that. I don't like how she behaved, but two wrongs, etc. So I need to ask, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. As I was reading, I presumed I would find out you'd chosen a terrible name. However, Aura is a lovely name and not particularly out there. Could you imagine an adult picking on a child and telling them their name is a freak name? That's what sister-in-law is doing. So, so disturbing. She's a busybody, weird, and a complete idiot. She stepped over the line massively. Her names are Yawn Boring. They're perfectly reasonable names, but pushing one's opinions onto others is not okay. Your daughter's name is beautiful. It's not too out there, and even if it was, it's your circus, your monkeys, so she can butt out. Oh, and your comments were not wrong. They were appropriately snarky. And can I say I love that your husband wasn't allowing this BS and has your back? Pat him on the back for me. That's a great husband. Yeah, you were matching her energy. Your daughter's name is beautiful. Stay away from her. You'll be getting judged for everything you do with your daughter. People like her are whiners and complainers who just need to be by themselves. Some people are wackadoo. My female 31 sister, 35 Claire, has struggled with her inability to have kids for years. She gets all kinds of questions from people about when she'll have kids. Still, somehow she focuses on what my husband says about the topic and complains how he constantly makes backhanded comments about her inability to have kids. She once claimed me he told her women in their 30s plus have lesser chances to bear children, or that one time she claimed he mocked her infertility by calling her garden barren, just like her. I admit that my husband is the type to dish it out, but her complaining seemed excessive because she never liked him anyway. Last week, we got together for dinner at my parents' house. My sister came downstairs later while mom and I were in the kitchen. She told me my husband suggested she back out of her IVF treatment and found better use for the money when she announced wanting to try IVF. She went on about how insensitive and hurtful his words were. I felt upset. I told her she was right to be mad, but she needed to stop coming to me to complain about him as if he were my son and try to speak to him instead. She snapped at me, saying she'd already talked to him, but since he's my husband and I brought him into the family, then I should be the one to handle him. I told her the reasoning didn't make any sense, but she called me selfish and cruel, just like him. It got so overwhelming when my mom sided with her, even going as far as to say I was enabling him. I left and went home. My husband said my sister is just being too sensitive because he was giving his honest opinion when she brought up the IVF and said that if she has an issue with him, she should tell him to his face. He also said that she was probably looking for an excuse to pick an argument with me and that I was innocent and had nothing to do with this despite her trying to involve me. Neither she nor my parents are speaking to me as of now. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot, both you and your husband. A match made in heaven. Tell your husband to keep his mouth shut. My husband is the type to dish it out. No, your husband is an idiot that thinks it's appropriate to comment on your sister's body and reproductive issues. What an awful, inconsiderate man you married. You don't seem too far behind him. It's one thing to be honest if someone asks for your opinion. However, it's an entirely different thing to offer your opinion when it's neither wanted nor needed. He's the type to believe his opinion is relevant and that other people care to hear it. Hopefully, someone clarifies to him that this is not the case, and since he's neither the sister's financial planner nor fertility doctor, he should sit back down. Fertility issues are incredibly personal, and your husband has absolutely no place dishing it out, as you call it, over something so personal and sensitive. And yes, she is sensitive. It's a sensitive topic, and you should be absolutely ashamed of your husband's disgusting behavior. He is being a cruel, vindictive bully who needs to learn that every little thought that passes through his bully brain doesn't need to come out of his mouth. 
Furthermore, him specifically targeting your sister says he wants to be cruel and hurtful to her, and you enable him. Why don't you care that he's intentionally cruel to her? Why do you feel that this isn't your business? Would you feel this way if he was insulting your mother? She's told him to his face. He doesn't care. Why do you hate your sister so much? She should kick both of you out of her life and your mother is right to support her. My 45 female mother, 76, is a very simple person. My father abandoned us when the youngest was an infant and my mother was never the same mentally. I have a good financial condition, I try to help as much as I can with the groceries and bills, but it is very complicated because my mother refuses to come to live with me and remains in the terrible house that my father gave her in the divorce. My brother, my sister and their three children, a young male teen, a male tween and a younger female, live in the house at the back, and the house was tiny with a big yard. My brother built his house in the back and made the house even smaller, and he used my mom as a free babysitter to take care of the kids he had, not to mention the dogs he adopted, and never paid for their food, and several times their children went to eat at my mother's house. Keep in mind that my mother receives a low salary in retirement that is only really enough for her to support herself. I've been saving money for over a decade to buy her a house, and I finally got it. It's a simple house with one bedroom and one bath with a big yard with a garden perfect for her. I talked to her and she agreed that it would be better for the house to be in my name because I know my brothers and what they're capable of at any given opportunity, but it would have a lifetime usufruct clause for her only. I warned her that I didn't want my brother to move with her, but in return, she wouldn't have to worry about bills and food anymore, as I would help. She looked relieved. I told my brother at her request she was next to me and he said it would be difficult to accommodate everyone but that eventually he would help expand the house to include everyone. I saw the despair on my mother's face so I made it clear that the house was for my mother and not for them. He started to say yes but he could help with the bills or food and that his and his mother's house was too bad for a family of five. I said no. Our mother accepted the gift knowing that he wouldn't live there and that due to their history, I wouldn't trust him to pay the bills. He doesn't pay my mother, and I wouldn't be paying for five people. He started calling me selfish, and that it was an idiot move to give a gift on condition, knowing how bad my mom's house is, and that she obviously had no other option to accept. He said I was purposely harming him, and posing as a monster he is not. My mom is more relieved to get out of the house, but my brothers call me an idiot even more because the house is in my name. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You're saving your mom from your mooch of a brother, and he's just being spiteful because you're doing it in a way that he cannot exploit. However, if you haven't already, you should consider consulting an attorney to have a plan to enforce keeping your brother out of your mother's house. I should say your house, because you're the owner, fortunately. You can take action if he tries to step over the line and invade her space. Your property and make sure you let him know you have consulted a lawyer and there will be consequences if he does anything improper. Great idea. I realize the brother may have just been angry, but he did accuse the OP of trying to harm him. Having a lawyer look over this situation to ensure that both the OP and the mother are protected sounds smart. By the way, the OP is a woman. A lot of the insults the brother uses are common when a man is upset with a woman, so this is a daughter trying to protect her mother from her brothers. Good luck keeping them out. That was very kind of you to help your mother out. You don't owe your brother anything. He's a leech and jealous of your mom's new home. Strongly suggest putting a ring doorbell in to keep an eye that they don't try any sketchy stuff like trying to stay overnight and then never leaving. Freeloaders and gaslighters are the best at turning good deeds into harmful and manipulative actions because it doesn't suit them. If they have a problem with supporting themselves, it's time for them to figure it out. They've gotten two decades of extra help. You don't owe them anything else. My male 36 wife, 27, and I just purchased our first home. We've always rented before. I'm what my grandfather called a shade tree mechanic. I work on my car and other people's cars just in my shop when I have time. It's a side hustle. I'm a teacher in real life. So is she. I, in the past, have gotten grease and dirt on our hand towels and she's told me off so I don't do it anymore, not for a long time anyway. Our new home has two and a half bathrooms, including one we have for guests. She decorated with all that stuff to make it look nice. Honestly, it's nicer than she decorated our ensuite in our room. She spent all week getting the house ready for our friends and family. She's very happy to show off our new home, as am I. 
I cleaned up the backyard and the shop to show my friends and family where I goof off. One thing she did was to leave a note pinned to the hand towels in the guest bathroom. It said, if you touch these, I will end you. And she'd drawn a little skull and crossbones. When it was time for everyone to come, she told me to check everything and make sure it looked nice. I suppose one of the things I should have done is to remove the note. I did not. We had an excellent party and everyone left with a full belly and a smile. The day after the party, we were cleaning up and I heard her call me by my name. She never calls me by my name. I hadn't done anything bad recently, so I wasn't sure why I was in trouble. I hadn't touched the hand towels and neither had anyone else. They were immaculate. She says I did it on purpose to make her look bad. I just missed the note. She called her mom and I heard her saying it was my fault people thought she didn't want them using her towels. It's such a minor thing, but she's still mad at me. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, but this is hilarious. Imagine being a guest and thinking you're not allowed to touch the hand towels because of an out-of-context sign. You'll both laugh at this one day. The funniest part is him trying to figure out why he's in trouble because she called him by name. He's innocent. Forgive the man. Not the idiot, and the sign is awesome. However, I would intentionally leave that sign for guests and put paper towels in the bathroom. Mistakes happen. This one happens to be harmless and hilarious. All you can do is apologize for forgetting the note and leave it at that. You can either laugh with your spouse or fight with them in marriage. When things get stressful, the more you laugh and find humor in them, the better and happier your marriage will be.